Hello everybody, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jackie and I create mosaics using sea glass. And today I'm going to show you how to create a building with your sea glass. So in the community where both my parents grew up, there was this one room schoolhouse that I had never been in, but I had driven by so many times. And it was a schoolhouse that both my parents attended when they were small. And I was always fascinated by this as a child because I couldn't imagine going to a school that had all of the grades in one room because I always went to a school where at least it was only my own grade in the classroom. So I was fascinated by this building and I was really disappointed last year when the building was burned by vandals. And I'd never been inside, I'd never really experienced being in a one-room schoolhouse, but it, I was so fascinated by it that I thought I should try and create that schoolhouse in a sea glass mosaic. So I have created a building in a sea glass mosaic before. I'll show you a picture of that. So a friend of mine wanted me to do a sea glass mosaic of her farmhouse in PEI. So what I did was I zoomed in on the farmhouse and I used that as a pattern for my sea glass mosaic. And this is the sea glass mosaic that I created from her picture. And this is a picture of the one room schoolhouse that I'm using to make this piece. So I took my picture of the one room schoolhouse and I expanded it into this pattern. And usually with a lot of my patterns, you'll notice that I'm fairly free flowing and I'm not exact in drawing the pattern. But for doing a building, you have to be quite exact if you want to make sure that your building is going to look like the building you want it to be. If you just want a random building, it doesn't matter as much. But if you want it to be a recognizable structure, then be very careful in drawing your pattern. So as you can see from my pattern here, I have my schoolhouse drawn to scale and I've indicated where I want the horizon line to be and where I want the ground line to be. And I put in a few extra details like a few fence posts. I want my knuck shucks over here. I'm going to have more than one because there's often, you know, more than one person at school. And I want the sky to be white and I want all these trees in here to be green. And for doing a schoolhouse like this, I've got brown on the ground, brown on the building, and brown on the roof. So in order to really make those stand out different, what I'm going to do is use different scales of brown. So for the roof, what I've done is I've taken a jar of my bottle tops. And my plan is, you know how bottle tops are all kind of wavy? So they're different. So I'm, what I'm going to do is arrange a bunch of these bottle tops up here so that it really distinguishes it the roof is really distinguished from the rest of the building. And then when I'm doing the building, I'll be using like my real tinies so that the building will kind of look like shingles. Because if you notice from the picture, this is a building that was just covered with old, worn, weathered shingles. So by using tiny little browns, you're going to get that feeling of shingles. So that's my plan for that. And then for the ground, I'm going to use medium, medium to large regular flat pieces. So then the ground is going to be like my normal brown, then tiny brown, and brown bottle tops. So it'll help create those three different areas of the piece. And the other thing that I've done is I picked out some special pieces. I found this triangular piece of pottery that would serve as this spot right here. This would have been like the sign that said the name of the schoolhouse on it. And I'm going to use a bunch of white sea glass for the windows. And I've searched through some of my whites. These don't, what I've found is your windows don't have to be the exact size that they were in the picture, but if they're kind of close, then it still gives you the feeling of that piece. If you notice in my farmhouse, the pieces aren't exact, but they are close. And the other thing that I picked out was I have this petrified wood, 
and I thought I'm going to use a few of those pieces for fence posts. I love petrified wood. We find quite a bit of this on our beach. It's really sparkly. It's like a rock, but it's been wood that's fossilized. So I wanted to give you a bit of a close-up view here of how I've used the brown to create the one-room schoolhouse. And if you look in really close, you can see I've used a bunch of these brown beer bottle tops to create kind of like a bumpy tiled roof type of look. And I've kind of squished them all together there. Have the chimney on top because in a one-room schoolhouse they would heat by a wood stove. And then you can see that I use tiny little browns to create all the shingles on the side of the schoolhouse. And in there I was kind of picky to pick out the more amber, light colored brown. Now, what to do with the bottom? So I often refer to brown as the unsung hero of sea glass because when it comes to mosaics, Brown is really your foundation. And this piece in particular is giving you a really good example of how you can take different types of brown and create different elements within your piece. So not only do you have a difference between the shingles on the side of the building, but also the tiles on the roof. I have to be careful not to let the ground blend with the building. So what I thought I would do, I love all things from the beach and I often pick up little rocks and stones and I love using them in my sea glass mosaics. So I love these little caramel pebbles. I think they're better than the big ones. And I think these, if I put a layer of pebbles along here, it's going to help create a good break between the ground and the shingles on the side of the building. And I think I'll also add a few more in here to have a path up to the front door. So I think I'll take the pebbles just in this one area, right down to the base of the frame. The other thing that I've done here, if you notice, when I'm picking out the browns for the bottom, they tend to be the bigger, thicker, chunkier, darker browns whereas the browns that I've picked out for the shingles are very tiny and amber colored. So I'm really pleased with how that worked. I think that's going to do just the trick. So the next step, if you look here, I have a horizon line here. It's a really rough horizon line, but my plan is to fill in with green everything from the brown all the way up to this line. So I'm going to need some small greens to fit into some of these pieces. I'll just set some here for now and then I'll, I'll fit them in. Make sure that all of those little spots get filled in with green and then it will read like the solid forest just behind the little schoolhouse. And the other thing that I'm going to do is pick out a bunch of triangle greens and place them along this horizon line. Kind of randomly, I would because these are going to be like the tops of the trees. And I find that if I do this in a manner so that the trees are at different levels, it looks a little bit more realistic. So then it's just a matter of gluing those on and then filling in all of this area green. And I've got a nice tray of green sea glass here lots of sea glass to fill all of this in so that's what I'm going to do next. So I finished my green and the green is that forest that is in behind the schoolhouse and I think it does a really good job setting off the brown in the schoolhouse and in the foreground. And the green also helps emphasize those three anukshuks which represent the children out in the yard during recess having a run around and playing. And one thing I really quite like about this one is that I've left quite a large area up at the top. So I've got lots of room for sky and I'm really going to work hard on making a super dynamic sky in this So I think one. this is working to make the sky fairly dynamic. I've used some really big chunky pieces of white which really contrast with the small little pieces. And I'm putting in some flowing lines of aqua here. I've got some more over here to go in. 
and I'm putting in some pottery pieces, some sea pottery, and some little blue pieces, and it all kind of works together to make the sky come alive a bit. So there you have it. I have finished my one-room schoolhouse. I hope this has been really inspirational for you, and it's given you some guidance on how you can create a building in your sea glass design. And I hope that you'll go ahead to create whatever building it is that has some meaning and interest to you. So thanks for joining me today, and until next time, happy sea glass hunting. Mm -hmm.